Hello, everybody. Good Friday morning out there. Hope everybody's having a great Friday morning. We got lots of cool stuff here on the YouTube channel here, guys. We got a Discord server that's also coming out as well, as well as the sports YouTube channel here as well. So you definitely have to check that out as well. And also, you guys can follow me on Twitter. Um, you, the, my Twitter handle is down below in the description. And guys, also, if you guys have not subscribed to the YouTube channel, we're trying to hit 500 subscribers, guys. So very important. Definitely appreciate everybody subscribing out there as well, as well as liking the video here at the end. In this video, I will be talking to you guys about flash flooding, uh, severe weather, as well as growing concerns over a major heat wave here into early August across much of the United States and your full tropical weather update here in this video as well. So like I said, guys, good Friday morning out there. Good start to the weekend here. And we got flash flooding alerts here, you know, flash flood watches across portions of West Virginia, Kentucky, as well as portions of northeastern Tennessee. And then we got lots of flash flooding alerts here from Arizona, uh, southern New Utah getting into portions there of New Mexico, Colorado, southwestern portions there of Kansas, the Oklahoma and Texas panhandles here as well, and then all those heat alerts across portions there of the Pacific Northwest with heat advisories and excessive heat warnings across those areas as well with a very strong heat wave here um, continuing across those areas. I'll get to that here later in this video. But for now, look at here the last 24 hours. Yeah, lots of heavy rain, some significant flash flooding, some water rescues here um, across portions of eastern Kentucky. Some of these areas saw upwards of eight inches of rain or more across eastern Kentucky into West Virginia, as well as Western Virginia as well, um, as we head here, you know, as we move through the last 24 hours. And kind of looking ahead to today, yeah, we still got that stationary boundary out there across the Tennessee Valley, the Ohio Valley, up through the Mid-Atlantic, and these very same areas are expected to, you know, see some heavy rainfall and potential flash flooding as we head here later on today as well. And you can see that here as we move through today, you can see where the heavier rainfall will be centered across portions of the, you know, Texas, Oklahoma panhandles, western Oklahoma, southwestern Kansas there. But still, we don't need much more rain across eastern Kentucky, Tennessee, as well as West Virginia. So just a little bit more rainfall could actually aggravate the flash flooding potential across these areas. And again, for some areas across portions of eastern Kentucky, West Virginia, down into the Tennessee Valley, yeah, some of these areas will see additional half inch to upwards of an inch of rain here as we head through the next 24 hours here today into your Saturday morning and then some significant rainfall is expected across western portions of Oklahoma the Texas and Oklahoma panhandle and into portions there of southwestern Kansas as we head here through the next 24 hours through the midday hours here on your Saturday with areas kind of around you know Amarillo getting up toward portions there of El Reno Oklahoma and westward and toward the Woodward Kansas area and then southwestern uh, Kansas like I said um, this is what we're kind of expecting as we move through the next 24 hours, probably on the order of one to three inches of rainfall here. So some beneficial rains for much here of uh, portions of the you know, central United States. But it does come at a cost. We do have flash flood kind of uh, you know, guidance that from the Weather Prediction Center sh showing here a widespread swath of slight to even moderate you know, risk for excessive rainfall and flash flooding. Um, you can, we already you know, witnessed what that moderate risk for flash flooding could do across eastern Kansas or eastern Kentucky. Yeah, we see that continuing as we head through portions of West Virginia into eastern Kentucky as we head through the afternoon today. Again, another moderate risk for excessive rainfall and flash flooding there. Also, another moderate risk here for excessive rainfall and flash flooding across southeastern Colorado, the Oklahoma Panhandle, as well as southwestern Kansas as we head into later today as well. Not to mention the extensive mar uh, marginal to slight risk for excessive rainfall and flash flooding across all of the Four Corners region through the Mid South here, the Tennessee Valley, and getting up here into the Mid Atlantic as well. We also do have a severe weather side to this as well. So not just the flash flooding, but we do have kind of another dynamic, and this is some severe weather right along that stationary boundary. We could have at least a marginal risk to even a slight risk for severe weather. That slight risk is up across portions of eastern Virginia, Maryland, and getting into southern uh, Delaware there. That's in a kind of a smaller area where stronger instability will be across those areas. But even down towards portions of Knoxville, Tennessee, Chattanooga, um, getting down towards portions there of southern uh, Arkansas, even a little pocket there into the Texas Panhandle and the far western Oklahoma near the Amarillo area and kind of nosing its way east towards uh, Wichita Falls. Yeah, we could see some isolated strong to severe storms as we head here into this afternoon, mainly a damaging wind risk here. And I'll show you why here in just a moment. But kind of looking at the composite reflectivity here using the NAM 3KM model, 
model. And yeah, you could see some complexes of showers and storms moving across the central plains as we head through early this afternoon. A couple sporadic showers and storms moving through West Virginia, getting through the Tennessee Valley as well during the early afternoon hours. But kind of moving this towards the late afternoon, you know, three, four, five o'clock. Yeah, you can see kind of more scattered showers and storms across from the mid-Atlantic back westward across the Tennessee Valley here and into the central and southern plains. Some of these storms could actually approach the Red River here in uh, Texas. So we definitely need the rainfall desperately, I know, across Texas and much of the western U.S. here as well. Um, and hopefully we can get some, you know, much needed rainfall across Kansas, Oklahoma. And hopefully we can, you know, see some of this, you know, shower and storm activity kind of move into northern Texas as well uh, toward the DFW Metroplex and over towards Texarkana. That would be some, you know, welcome news as well. But yeah, looking up here across portions of the mid-Atlantic towards portions of Virginia, getting into Maryland. Yeah, you see these isolated to kind of widely scattered storms kind of popping up. These could be severe in that slight risk zone, and that will continue as we head into the evening hours here as well. And then another complex of storms will start to build across the Texas and Oklahoma panhandles into southern uh, Kansas as we head to the overnight hours as that low-level jet really starts to kick in here with additional moisture moving into the area here, supporting the threat for some heavy rainfall there as well. But kind of looking at the setup with the severe weather, the slight risk zone across Virginia there, getting into Maryland and southern Delaware, yeah, we got some instability growing here in the oranges and even the reds and pinks here, yeah, we could have instability in the oranges around 2,000 to 3,000 joules per kilogram and where you see kind of the maroon reds and even some of the purples here in the eastern portions of Virginia. That's where we could see instability up to around 3,500 joules per kilogram. So pretty pretty strong instability starting to build. Uh, we kind of have a little bit of some shear, especially in the northern Virginia, Maryland, and portions of southern Delaware on the order of, you know, 40 to 50 knots. So some pretty decent wind shear here to kind of overlap some of that instability here, especially into portions of those, you know, slight risk zone areas that the Storm Prediction Center has highlighted. Uh, but we're not really seeing much of a signal for hail. And that the reason why is because the lapse rates are not very, you know, are not very strong. We got lapse rates around, you know, five to six uh, degrees Celsius per kilometer. So that means as you go up in the atmosphere, you're not really seeing a lot of that stronger cooling aloft. So you're not going to really get those real strong 50,000 foot updrafts or anything like that. Uh, so what that means is kind of a damaging downburst wind risk here uh, with a lot of these storms. Again, that, you know, the tornado risk is, you know, below 2% um, and so is the hail risk below 5%. So really just a damaging downburst wind to your, you know, wind risk with some of these supercells if they do develop here across these areas later on today. But as we push into your Saturday, again, we got that stationary to cold front moving through the southeast here, you know, into portions of the Tennessee Valley, starting to nudge its way southward toward the Red River there in Oklahoma and Texas. And hopefully we can see some rainfall in those areas as well into your Saturday. And it looks like there is a signal, at least for a complex of showers and storms, uh, to kind of propagate across portions of southern Kansas, much of northern and northeastern Oklahoma, into the mid-south there, across the Fort Smith area, getting over towards Little Rock, and then into portions near Joplin, Missouri, getting into southern Missouri Valley there. Yeah, maybe some heavy rainfall on the order of two to four inches plus in some of these areas. Even some heavier rainfall here getting down towards the Jackson, Mississippi area, Tupelo, uh, getting over towards the Carolinas there with an additional one to two inches in some of these locations as well. So that is some good news, especially when, you know, considering especially Oklahoma, Kansas, and into North Texas, they do have that drought. Hopefully some of these areas can get that beneficial rain that they so desperately need across those areas. And the Weather Prediction Center starts to agree that there is going to be some heavy rainfall out there, and uh, we will have a marginal to slight risk for excessive rainfall and uh, flash flooding potential across the four corners, getting over towards southern Kansas, northern Oklahoma, into the lower Missouri Valley, in towards portions of the western Tennessee Valley there as well and kind of extending over toward the Carolinas. Yeah, a potential there of at least a 5 to 15 percent chance of some isolated to scattered flash flooding events across these areas as we head into the weekend here on your Saturday. And again, we still have that kind of smaller area of a marginal risk across southeastern Oklahoma, getting down toward the Red River there here toward the Texarkana area and then getting into portions of southwestern Arkansas. Yeah, we do have a chance for some isolated strong to severe storms. The Storm Prediction Center has put out a marginal risk in this area. And again, I think that's mainly going to be for the risk here of some, uh, you know, damaging downburst winds here as we have that kind of complex of storms I was talking about kind of moving through during the overnight on Friday into your Saturday. That will continue into the Saturday afternoon time frame. Again, some very heavy rain down toward Joplin, getting across portions of southeastern uh, Kansas, far northern Oklahoma. But as we kind of move toward the afternoon hours, we'll start to kind of see that weaken a little bit as it moves toward the lower Missouri Valley. But additional storms will start to fire up right along the Red River there into Oklahoma, Texas. 
Texas and eastward toward the Mid-South and into the you know Gulf Coast states there towards Mississippi, Alabama. And again, especially across southeastern Oklahoma into portions there of far northeast Texas and southwestern Arkansas, some of these kind of scattered showers and storms could become severe with some downburst winds here as well. And that will kind of continue into the early evening hours, maybe a couple stronger storms trying to pop up across portions of the Texas Panhandle. And those will kind of traverse eastward here across those very same areas that have seen this you know heavy rainfall day after day as we head into your Sunday morning. But kind of looking at the setup for the severe potential here on your Saturday with that marginal risk area. Yeah, you see the oranges and the maroon reds there into southeastern Oklahoma. That supports 2,000 to locally 3,000 joules per kilogram instability. So we got some moderate to locally strong instability building across these areas. We also have a little bit of shear. Now, the shear doesn't look very strong, but we do have enough shear kind of overlapping this instability on your Saturday uh, to produce maybe some, you know, isolated strong to severe storms. So we're not talking about a severe weather outbreak or anything like that. Uh, we're just talking about mainly some isolated pop-up showers and storms that could become severe with mainly a downburst kind of wind threat with maybe a couple micro bursts in there as well as we kind of move into portions there again of southeastern Oklahoma, southwestern portions of Arkansas, and maybe far northeast Texas, just north of the D, uh, DFW uh, Metroplex, getting up towards Texarkana, maybe up towards portions, uh, you know, uh, the, the Little Rock area potentially as well. Looking at the lapse rates, again, this is the reason why I'm not expecting too much in the way of hail. The lapse rates are pretty weak, again, about 5 to 6 degrees Celsius per kilometer. So, again, the cooling aloft in the atmosphere as you go up here, you know, 10, 20, 30,000 feet, we're really not seeing that strong cooling aloft. So, we're not really expecting those big, tall updrafts that you see here sometimes during the middle of summer. We're just not seeing that here on your Saturday. So, again, just a damaging downburst wind risk here as well. That tornado risk, it will also remain very low as well, kind of with the absence of some of that wind shear. By kind of looking here as as we head here into your Sunday afternoon and evening here, uh, the big story starts to turn towards the major heat out there as well. We got that major heat continuing across the Pacific Northwest here into Sunday afternoon with that ridge kind of continuing across the West Coast. A little bit of kind of some subtle troughing across the upper Great Lakes will continue into Sunday as well. And that will just continue to kind of march its way eastward here from west to east uh, with that ridge here on early next week here into that a Monday time frame and even into Tuesday here as well. But looking back here at our temperatures uh, today, this afternoon, July 29th here on your Friday. Look at all the heat across the West Coast, guys. We got widespread 105s to 110s from Washington down through Oregon, getting into California here, Nevada, Idaho, all those areas here as well. Starting to heat up across portions there of Montana, getting into the, you know, the Western Dakotas as well. And again, ahead of that boundary across portions of the Deep South, all the way through the Gulf Coast and the Southeast. Yeah, we're still seeing some you know widespread upper 90s to lower 100s as well. Forecasting high of 101, the DFW Metroplex, 99 there here um, into portions of the Wichita Wichita Falls area, um, 113 portions of, you know, Northern California. Again, some refreshing air can be found across the Midwest here, 79 in Chicago, 77 up into Milwaukee here, maybe some lower 80s getting in toward the Toronto area as we head into your Friday afternoon as well. That just continues into Saturday. Again, you can see that heat starting to expand across the Northern Plains, Upper Midwest. Again, we'll warm up here towards the Twin Cities, Minneapolis, St. Paul to near 90 degrees, some near 100 degree temperatures across the Billings, Montana area as we head into Saturday. And again, that will continue here into Sunday, a lot more heat will start to build across the Central Plains and moving its way over toward the Western Great Lakes. And that also continues even into Monday as we kind of turn the page uh, to early August here on August 1st on your Monday. Again, widespread 100s from portions of there of Southern Saskatchewan um, all the way up into Canada, all the way down through portions of the Central, Northern and Southern Plains as we head into your Monday time frame. Also looking here at Monday as well, with all that heating out there, we got kind of a potent cold front kind of moving down through the upper Mississippi, or the upper Mississippi Valley through the Western Great Lakes as we move into, you know, Monday morning and even into Monday afternoon. And ahead of that kind of cold front, um, some of the models are a little mixed on what will happen. Uh, this is the GFS, for example, is showing some strong to almost extreme values of instability across southern Wisconsin, northern and central Illinois ahead of that cold front on the, you know, on the order of 2,000 to locally 4,000 joules per kilogram here by late Monday afternoon. We also have a little bit of shear kind of overlapping, at least on the GFS model here, kind of some, you know, 25 to 35 plus knot kind of shear, um, you know, in the mid-levels of the atmosphere kind of, uh, you know, overlapping some of the stronger instability. We also do have some pretty strong lapse rates as well, kind of approaching seven degrees Celsius per kilometer here. So we might actually start to see some more large hail potential as we head into Monday afternoon as well. So that will be something to watch. Again, the supercell composite values a few days out are already sort of, you know, getting close to that 18 to 20 uh, mark here, kind of middle of the road on the, uh, on the scale here with the supercell composite values. So yeah, we could be seeing some supercell storms potentially uh, developing again, according to the 
GFS model. Other models don't really show this here, the European forecast model or the, you know, the Canadian model or even the ICON model really kind of uh, skip out on this kind of, you know, this kind of update of the severe weather potential. We're not really seeing much of that here on those models, but kind of taking a little bit of a sounding here to kind of see what the GFS model is, you know, showing with this setup. Uh, it does have a possible hazard tag of tornado. Um, not really that impressive of a hodograph. However, uh, there are some, you know, the downdraft cape is actually up to almost 1,200 joules per kilogram there, and the surface base instability is up near 5,500. So uh, we do have a lot of strong, you know, low-level moisture, and we also have temperatures rising to near 90. So there might be a little bit of a capping issue here across the mid-levels of the atmosphere. But if we can open this mid-levels up a little bit here for some hail growth, yeah, we could be seeing some large hail over an inch in diameter in this type of environment as we move into Monday afternoon. So kind of let's show you the, re uh, you know, the composite reflectivity of what we can expect potentially as we head towards Monday afternoon. Again, according to the GFS model, again, this will be kind of updating here the next few days, so I will keep you updated on this as well. Uh, but looking here at early Monday afternoon, not much on the radar, maybe a couple showers up towards portions here of the upper, uh, you know, upper Mississippi Valley into portions of the UP of Michigan here as well. But as we kind of move toward the peak heating time frame here, the GFS along that cold front and just ahead of it uh, wants to kind of develop some widely scattered showers and storms, potentially supercells from portions of lower Michigan towards portions there of Grand Rapids all the way through the Chicagoland area here in the north central Illinois toward the Quad Cities here in Davenport, Iowa, getting in toward Ottumwa, Iowa, and then down south of Des Moines, and then really starting to kind of develop a kind of broken line of storms from portions there of the southern Great Lakes all the way back towards the northern Missouri Valley as well as we head towards the Monday afternoon and evening time frame. Then kind of looking ahead here as well, we have that, you know, Climate Prediction Center six to 10 day temperature outlook here showing you, you know, widespread heat starting to build along and east of the, you know, the Rocky Mountains and west of the Rockies. We got that monsoon weather continuing with below normal temperatures favored during that August 3rd through the 7th time frame. And we do have a trough. We have an upper level trough kind of digging its way down from British Columbia and portions of the Aleutian Islands all the way down into the Pacific Northwest during this time frame as well from August 3rd through August 7th. And that will provide some cooler temperatures for portions of Seattle, Portland, and getting over towards portions of, you know, Boise, Idaho as well. But underneath that ridge, we're not seeing much of a signal for a lot of precipitation. I mean, yeah, sure, you might see a couple storm complexes move through from time to time across, especially the Great Lakes region from northern Minnesota through northern Wisconsin and perhaps, you know, uh, you know, the UP of Michigan and getting in towards, you know, the northeast. But really for, you know, the vast majority of this August 3rd through the 7th period, not seeing much of a signal for precipitation during that period. Um, and again, to the west, that monsoon season is going to be very strong. Lots of moisture moving in here across western Mexico, feeding up into portions of the Four Corners region as well as the Intermountain West and we'll see a lot of precipitation across Utah getting down through Arizona as well as portions there of western Colorado northwestern New Mexico and getting up into Nevada as well again those desperately needed areas for precipitation so that is some good news that is some welcome news here across those areas as we kind of move it a little bit farther the Climate Prediction Center's 8 to 14 day temperature outlook here probabilities um, from August 5th through August 11th still maintains you know that major heat wave across portions of the Midwest, the Ohio Valley, and over towards, you know, the I-95 corridor towards New England and down across the south here, United States as well. A little bit of heating starting to build across portions of, you know, as we get closer toward the August 11th time frame across the West Coast there from California up towards Seattle. But again, not as hot as what we're seeing across the middle of the country. And again, underneath that monsoonal weather, yeah, we're seeing below normal uh, temperatures favored across Arizona, southern Utah, much of the Las Vegas area, getting back here across portions of western New Mexico as as well. Again, you can continue to see some of that monsoonal weather across Las Vegas, getting over towards Salt Lake City, getting down towards Phoenix. Yeah, a lot of these areas here during that August 5th through the 11th time frame, yeah, we're going to be seeing some, you know, above normal precipitation there as well. Underneath that ridge, again, from portions of Kansas City all the way up through Chicago, much of, you know, the Green Bay area, getting over toward Detroit. Yeah, a lot of these areas here below normal precipitation wise here uh, during that August 5th through 11th time frame as well. I do want to turn your attention towards portions of the coastal areas here of Texas as well as portions of Louisiana. The Climate Prediction Center here, last update here um, yesterday, actually does show that August 5th through 11th timeframe showing slightly favorable uh, conditions for, you know, slightly above normal precipitation from Corpus Christi, um, getting up toward Houston, as well as the Lake Charles area here as well. Um, and that could be due to some tropical moisture moving up in the area. I'll kind of, you know, cover that into my tropical weather update here um, in just a moment.
But again, regarding that heat out there, we got kind of two things and kind of, you know, two or three things working here at once. We got that ridge across the central and western uh, Atlantic. That will start to back westward across the east coast here during this period. We'll also have that, you know, ridge across the western United States kind of merge with that, you know, high pressure system backing west across the western uh, Atlantic for kind of one big, strong, you know, ridge across the middle of the country. We also will start to see a little bit of a trough kind of form across portions of the Aleutian Islands, getting down towards British Columbia as well as the Pacific Northwest during this period as well. So this is Tuesday, August 2nd. You can see some ridging starting to build across the middle of the country there as well. We start to see that trough start to become a little more established across portions of the Aleutian Islands, getting down towards western, uh, the western British Columbia coast there. Um, and that ridge really starting to build across portions of the center of the country into the east coast. And that really kind of amplifies as we get towards that Thursday, August 4th timeframe as well with that kind of high pressure system across the western Atlantic backing its way westward. We got that ridge kind of moving east and they kind of merge across the middle of the country in the East Coast, where we have that kind of subtle upper level trough across portions of the British Columbia area in Canada, all the way down towards the Pacific Northwest here, and kind of extending up toward the Aleutian Islands as well. Um, so that is something we'll watch as we get into early August. And kind of looking at the temperatures here at the surface, yeah, look at these widespread 105s to 110s plus across the Dakotas, all the way down here to Texas here, um, and into portions of the, you know, the Missouri Valley as we get into that Tuesday, August 2nd timeframe. And that really kind of expands a little bit more as we head into that Wednesday time frame and even Thursday guys look at all that widespread heat Toronto Canada on Thursday August 4th you guys could be in the mid to upper 90s Chicago Illinois in the mid 90s as well 103s down into portions there of Austin Texas Dallas Fort Worth getting up toward the Wichita Falls area and widespread 90s to near 100 across much of the New England region all the way down the east coast here as well as we get to that period but look at across portions there the Pacific Northwest with that trough influence yeah we have a lot of cooler temperatures across those regions uh, from Seattle all the way down to Portland, Oregon, Eugene, Oregon as well, as we kind of move into that Thursday, August 4th time frame with widespread 60s and 70s uh, being favored there. Uh, but again, those areas down toward Phoenix, getting down toward portions of Death Valley there, yeah, a lot of heat continuing across those areas as we get towards Thursday, August 4th. And we're also kind of looking at the precipitation anomalies as we get into that first, kind of moving into that first and second week in August. There is some kind of signal for some storm complexes that might kind of traverse the northern and northeastern periphery of this ridge uh, that we kind of, you know, classic summer type pattern um, that we've seen all year. And uh, there's no reason for that to not happen. I really think there's still going to be an active storm track across some parts of the United States, although the main storm track at first will actually be across portions of southern Canada. So from Alberta, getting over towards the Saskatchewan and portions there of Manitoba and towards, you know, western Ontario. But as this ridge along the northern periphery starts to break down a little bit more here, kind of a weaker signal here for some precipitation across portions of the northern plains, uh, the western Great Lakes, and maybe down toward the Ohio Valley. As we get into that second week in August toward the August, you know, 9th, 10th, 11th time frame. Uh, so that will be something to watch as well. Now turning your attention to your full tropical weather update. We still got two tropical storms spinning across the eastern Pacific Basin. We got Tropical Storm Georgette and also Tropical Storm Frank here, and they're both very kind of similar in proximity to each other. They're very close to each other, and uh, Georgette's going to take kind of a weird path. It's going to be kind of stationary for a couple of days and kind of move down to the south and west and then kind of turn back to the northeast here as we head into early next week as well. And then Tropical Storm Frank is just kind of going to move into a straight line to the north and west here over the next several days, uh, becoming a hurricane actually sometime this morning, so that will be something to watch. It's only, you know, uh, 9 to 10 mile per hour off of a, you know category 1 strength right now. It has maximum sustained winds of 65 miles per hour. It's currently moving west to 10 miles per hour, but it looks to turn more west-northwest, if not straight to the northwest here in the next couple of days as well as it kind of maintains that category 1 to perhaps category 2 uh, hurricane status here until it reaches the cooler waters across the eastern Pacific Basin as we head into early next week. And looking at the satellite imagery here of these two storms, you can see Tropical Storm Georgette here to the north and west, a little more compact system a little bit smaller but you can see kind of tropical storm uh you know uh, frank that'll become hurricane frank here as we head into later today yeah kind of a little disorganized but it'll really start to kind of develop that eye wall potentially across some of these areas as we move here a little bit uh into the later on today into this weekend so that will be something to watch and still continuing across the atlantic the gulf and the caribbean very quiet that'll continue through the next five if not ten days still not really seeing anything here uh you know that strikes you know uh you know active period but we do 
we are seeing a little bit here of something, and we're, we're going to kind of keep an eye on this, is a little bit of some of these waves that did come off the African coast a few days ago. They might try to sneak up across the Western Caribbean, and if some of these kind of have enough you know, moisture with them, the moisture at least might start to travel into the Gulf, but the main system might actually stay across portions of the Central Americas. So that is be, you know, something to watch at least as we head through the next several days. Again, we're not really talking about major hurricane at this time, but we're really going to kind of watch that you know, precipitable water values, some of that low-level moisture kind of moving into the western Gulf uh, towards potentially the Texas coast or the Louisiana coast as we head towards, you know, the early to middle portion of August there as well. Like I said, we still have that, you know, uh, that five to ten day period, very quiet although here uh, with that period um, as well. Kind of also looking at the sea surface temperatures here as well. We have a lot of warm waters across the eastern Pacific. That's where Tropical Storm Georgette and Frank are. We got very anomalously high water temperatures here across portions of the Gulf, getting into the Western Caribbean. Very warm across the Western Atlantic as a whole. And then the Southern Atlantic, again, where all these waves are now, very warm. So once we get this hurricane season going, guys, it's going to be very, very tough to stop it, I think, here with all the momentum uh, once we get toward August, September, and October here um, as we get a little bit farther. But looking here at the Texas coastline, the, the, the climate forecasting systems model does have a little bit of a signal as we get in toward the August 4th through the August 11th time frame, probably closer to mid-August, of maybe some tropical moisture trying to kind of move into portions of, you know, the Corpus Christi area, Houston, and perhaps up toward Lake Charles. Now, it is a far fetch from being, an, uh, you know, a written in stone, guys, um, but this could become the next potential storm or even at least uh, some tropical rains at the very least kind of moving up into southeastern Texas, which would also be welcome news uh, with some of these areas also in drought as well. So we'll keep an eye on that as we get a little bit closer here in time. So again, that was a long video, guys. I definitely appreciate, you know, breaking stuff down for you guys with, the, you know, all the weather out there from the flash flooding to the severe weather to the heat wave as well here as the tropical weather as well. So thank you for watching, guys. Much appreciated. Hope everybody has a great Friday out there. Remember to like my video. Uh, give me a thumbs up below. Also leave your comments, questions, and concerns below. I'll get to those later on today. And subscribe, guys. Subscribe to the YouTube channel um all we need to get to here at least for the next couple weeks is 500 guys so definitely please uh get to me to my goal to 500 I very much appreciate it also if you guys want to follow me on twitter i have the twitter handle down below in the description as well as the discord server as well guys if you want to join the discord server um and talk to me as well here and have conversations as well um that is also up to you guys you can click on the discord server down below in the description so thank you guys for watching and have a great and lovely weekend and i will see you here tomorrow morning